Hey, welcome back to yet another build video. Uh, there's not many left in this series, but I'm pretty excited about this one. This is the Master Creations Muldoon's Distillery. I don't know much about the kit, uh, but the box says copyright 1991, so maybe that's how old it is. Uh, and it also says that Master Creations was established in 1984, and it's not much else that I know. This is a fairly expensive kit. Uh, it was about $350 on eBay, and I'm not sure what the original retail price was. I think one of the reasons it's expensive is it has uh, working lights, computer controlled lights, so I'm interested to see what that's like. I really have not looked in the box past the paperwork, uh, so let's see what we have. We have basically uh, post-release notes, registration card, and the instructions are in a booklet, which is uh, probably not very convenient to kind of hold open on the desk as you do work. Uh, it looks like there's an electric motor. We have a circuit board. It even includes a pencil, some windows, These are metal castings, so the walls are all metal apparently, it looks like, the brick wall, metal castings for the brick wall. Well, that's about it. So obviously there's a lot to deal with here, so I will uh, start digging into the instructions and see how to get started. There's not a lot of diagrams in the instructions, but he uses a naming convention where the second letter of each part indicates the section. So the main building is section M, and all the main building parts have M as the second letter of the part number. So the first step is to cut out all the main building parts, which are all these pieces. And he doesn't mention anything about bracing. And he didn't give any bracing wood. I took a chance that I knew what I was doing and I braced all the wall pieces. And I think I did it correctly so that they won't interfere with anything, but we'll find out. I painted the outside of the building with a brown color, uh, Vallejo concrete and Vallejo dirt using an airbrush. So a couple different shades of brown on here. And now I'm going to paint the main building color, which is folk heart Italian sage. I'm going to use a sponge to apply that. This is the building with the walls uh, put together and you can see all my bracing and uh, my bracing did interfere with a little bit of further construction but it was pretty easy to remove the bracing uh, either with a knife or a razor blade uh, so it really wasn't, hasn't been much of a problem yet. I have this piece which goes on this side. This is the uh, water wheel side and this is what they call the track side. So now I'm in the process of putting on the roof. The build is a little bit confusing. The instructions are a little confusing. Uh, the, some of the parts are mislabeled. 
the only pictures in the instruction booklet are of the completed model. There's no sort of in progress photos. Uh, so you have to really kind of figure out what he's talking about. So for example, we have these pieces here. These were mislabeled and they go here. Apparently, he's not real clear about that, but they block over the windows and this area here, which may be intentional or may not be. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I guess that's where the tower goes. But here, these are windows that are blocked over by that piece. And this was one of the areas where I had to remove some of the uh, supports. There's also this floor assembly, which goes in here, but I'm not entirely sure what its purpose is yet. And I know that there's some kind of a motor that goes into this thing, which I guess is to turn the water wheel. I'm not sure. One of the hardest parts of the kit is actually cutting out the pieces because they're not all that well cut from the sprues. So just as an example of one of the areas of confusion, apparently these pieces and these pieces were not supposed to be glued to the model yet. I was going to glue this here. What you're supposed to do is glue them like this with these uh, length strips and then attach the roof to them and once you have a roof assembly glue the entire roof to the model apparently. I don't know how much of a difference it makes but uh, I'm gonna have to do some investigation. These are already solidly glued on here so there's probably not much I can do about it. And then these strips are just a little bit short here. I'm working on the roof shingles and this is the roofing paper that they give you uh, with the kit. and It has a sticky backing this is my uh, roof paper from the uh, fine scale models uh, Hazen Boyd kit and it seems to have a little more character even though it's just paper so I'm using it I think I have enough this actually doesn't look like very much for the all the roofing that's on the kit so this is one of the pieces and the difference is I have to spray it with uh, spray adhesive to put the roof paper on This is as far as I got with the roof shingles before I ran out, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I ordered some online and there's other stuff I can do uh, before those arrive. I'm working on the water wheel and one of the hard parts is going to be cutting the water wheel spokes out from this sheet. One of the things that makes this difficult is the grain runs this way. So these pieces and some of these pieces have grain running crosswise and that makes them very fragile. With the spoke cut out, I'm going to cover the spokes with some white glue and hopefully this will uh, strengthen them so that they don't break along the grain.
I've been working on the various sub-assemblies and now it's time to think about painting them. We have the water wheel, two loading docks, the water tower, and supports for the water tower. I decided to paint these pieces with Vallejo wood grain which is a transparent color and unfortunately my water wheel warped because of the moisture and in trying to compress it I collapsed it so it's not looking too good. You have to do something here to fix this guy. I was missing a paddle and that didn't help. But I'm not sure I like this color. I used this on the Wicked Wandas. It looked pretty good. I don't know if it looks good here. I think I mostly got it fixed except for this one area that uh, was missing the panel which is where the warping started in the first place. Uh, this is one of the reasons that when I paint wood pieces I typically spray them with an enamel spray paint before I uh, apply any water-based paints. Uh, I can't say for sure that that would have saved this piece had I done that. But in this case, I wanted to use the uh, transparent paint to show the wood grain. Uh, so I obviously couldn't spray uh, enamel spray paint over top of that. I ordered additional roofing from rail scale models. And the shingles are a pretty good match for what came from the uh, fine scale models kit. I think once it's painted, you won't be able to tell the difference. Um, so they give you two sheets of the size. And I thought I had ordered the non-sticky backing. You can, you can get non-sticky backing or sticky backing. Uh, I guess I had ordered the sticky backing, which is fine. It's a little more expensive, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a few dollars. Uh, and it's in this case, it was actually more convenient. So that'll be fine. So now I can finish shingling the roof. After trimming the shingles to the right size, you can uh, fluff them. And I found that the easiest way to do this was, is with a razor blade. Because every time you hit the roof, it has the best chance of actually picking up a shingle. But it's still a tedious process. These rail scale shingles, since they have uh, adhesive on the actual shingle part, it's much more difficult to, to get them up. I painted the roof. Uh, I used uh, Vallejo Nato Brown and then I gave it a light overspray of Vallejo Dirt with the airbrush. So on this roof panel, I attached the structure on the underside, which is what you're supposed to do with this panel as well, but I screwed that one up. And so now I have to fit them together. And they're not a great fit. There's a little bit of a gap here. So I have to figure out some way to, to make that work. So I think I might cut these struts and make it uh, compress out. But then there's these dormer pieces that fit on top. So I don't want to make those not fit. So I think I'm going to attach these uh, roof pieces first. I think I was able to get it to fit pretty easily. So here's my my gluing and, and clamping method. Uh, so I'll let that dry and come back and see how it looks. Here's how it looks with the dormers attached and this tower is attached and the glue is still drying. And then I have these uh, side dormers which go here. And I think I'm going to need to put acetate in these windows before I do much more assembly. And I also want to paint these interiors black uh, and, and maybe add a little more support in there uh, for these pieces before I attach them to the roof. When I look at one of my dormers compared to the roof piece, it seems kind of obvious that I glued my sides on the wrong spot, that they should go on the outside, this outside edge of the front piece. Because I think these dormers are too narrow, uh, which should be an easy fix. This is one of the areas the instructions are kind of unclear is exactly how the pieces sort of go together. So the nice thing about wood is if you make a mistake you can usually just carve it right off. Like that. And now add it back to the side. 
Well, to keep things interesting, there are two roof parts called GM4. But you can figure out that this piece goes here by the water wheel. And then this piece goes over the extension of the water wheel. At this point, I have my dormers glued in place. And I have the window panes, the acetate in the windows. Uh, and I think I'm going to wait until the last minute to put the roofs over the uh, dormers. Um, I think I want to put the trim on first. And then in the instructions he says along these uh, roof caps to use a brown paper bag. Uh, I'm not even sure where to get brown paper bag anymore. I'm working on the roof section for the wheelhouse and the instructions are about the most confusing uh, for this part than any other portion of the build. But I think I kind of got it figured out. This is the one that has two GM4 parts. Here's a GM4 and this is a GM4. And I, I kind of have a test fit going on here. Nothing is glued. But you have this uh, folding piece of cardboard which goes over this uh, and then kind of fits in here like that. And then this piece apparently drops in there with that on top and for some reason you're not supposed to glue these in. This is supposed to be a removable uh, roofing piece. So anyway I think that's uh, how the whole thing goes together. So I'm going to start uh, gluing that. I think I got the roof figured out because this looks right to me. And then this roof section and these side walls apparently get covered with uh, the corrugated sheet metal. At this point about the only parts that are left are these sprues of uh, trim pieces and I'm kind of assuming that everything is trim and if it's not trim then I can uh, uh, paint over it. I painted these with a gray enamel and then I sprayed some brown uh, acrylic with an airbrush and uh, now I'm going to paint white with a, uh, a sponge so the white will be the trim color. Once I cut it out of the sprue, the edges are going to be exposed as uh, just the natural wood color, but I think I can fix that with weathering, so I don't think it will be very noticeable. These are the pieces that I painted full guard barnwood and then gave a wash of a Vallejo uh, dark gray, and now I'm going to dry brush on Vallejo silver gray. I'm about halfway through the windows and the trim and uh, this is a pretty challenging part of the build. There's a lot of looking for pieces uh, on the different sprues. Uh, I think there are pieces that aren't referenced in the instructions. I think the instructions reference some pieces incorrectly. Uh, and the windows themselves are kind of tedious. Uh, some of these are uh, six pieces or so. Another thing that makes this more complicated is on some of the trim pieces this is the side that's exposed. I only painted uh, this side, uh, so I need to go back and repaint this side and then apply those trim pieces. Uh, so my approach is that I'm kind of like looking through and finding the pieces that are the easiest to fit and then working my way down to find the more, to, to deal with the more mysterious pieces. And then there's also the rafter tails. Many of these are rafter tails. I got all the trim and windows in and uh, that was really very difficult uh, looking through all the sprues to try and find the parts but uh, just kind of chip away at it one piece at a time. Uh, I added the roof pieces and for the capping I used just black construction paper which I'm going to repaint. The dormer windows they already have the glass in. All that remains on these sprues is the rafters, so I repainted them brown and I'm going to attach them next. 
I'm trying to figure out how these low foundation pieces fit together and it's definitely a puzzle and the instructions basically say just to follow the pictures. Unfortunately the way he did the scenery you can't really see much of the foundation from the pictures. So I actually measured and for these low pieces I have 20 inches of low pieces and the building requires 17 inches. But there's also this piece they call the trackside shack which also needs foundation pieces but I'm going to deal with this later. So for the building what I have done at this point is I glued these support pieces all around the, uh, the perimeter. So those are going to hold up the various foundation stone walls like that. It'll give me a gluing surface. And I think I'm going to put some back supports in as well. Then on the water wheel side there's this assembly which is higher and it goes here. So unfortunately this building once you have the foundation in does not sit flat. You actually kind of have to build the building into your layout uh, and since I don't have a spot on the layout for it yet I'm gonna have to work around that. Now since this side which is what they call the track side uh, since it has a loading dock that goes all the way across I do kind of wonder whether this is supposed to have a, a foundation piece but there's nothing else in the kit to fill in underneath the dock. Well this kind of crazy system here is my back supports for the stone foundation so we'll see if I can uh, make that work. This kit requires a lot of corrugated metal uh, for the roofs and then also there is uh, this trackside shed where the all of the walls are supposed to be covered in corrugated metal. This is what they give you with the kit. So this is actual metal. I don't really like working with metal too much. So I got some other stuff. Uh, this is from Casey's Workshop. Uh, CaseyWorkshop.com I believe. And uh, so what I'm going to do is cut these into strips this size and then paint them. And uh, also going to do that with these and so we'll get kind of a comparison of uh, the different corrugated metal products and then I also ordered some from Foscale models but they're kind of slow on delivery so we'll see if they arrive um, but I did have these pieces left over from a previous build uh, so I will get started with that these are my corrugated sheet metal pieces and at this point I sprayed them with uh, Krylon camouflage brown and then I lightly oversprayed that with Tester's Graphite Metallic Gray. I used to try to do it lightly. It kind of came out of the can a little too fast, especially on this sheet. So I sprayed over that a little more of uh, the uh, Krylon Camouflage Brown. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sponge and apply some rust colors. I have uh, Pueblo, Traditional Burnt Sienna, and Rickwood Red. The acrylic paint has dried on my corrugated metal. I have two cardboard sheets of this metal and the other one uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now uh, and cut it apart and, and just use it with the acrylic paint. On this one I'm going to try a couple other techniques. So the first one is this Vallejo iron oxide pigment and for this what I like to do is apply it using a uh, paint thinner like turpentine and just kind of spread it onto the uh, panels. On the other half of the panels I want to use this AK Interactive uh, Rust Deposit and this is an enamel so I have to thin it with uh, turpentine.
This is all of the corrugated metal that came out of those strips. Uh, so it's about half Casey Workshop and half uh, from the uh, Masters Creation Kit. And I went through about uh, three razor blades on the chopper, chopping them in, into uh, the rectangles. I feel like I figured out the puzzle to the foundation. So I got the low wall all the way around. Uh, needs a little bit of touch up painting, but that's fine. And uh, I think the docks will fit on. There are these two holes. I have no idea what these two holes are for. You're going to have to figure that out. So now the one thing that is left is the rafters. So I got to start uh, doing the rafters. And then uh, corrugated roofing goes here, here, and over here. I got all the rafter tails on, or at least uh, all the main rafter tails on, and it really enhanced the appearance of the building. And so now I'm finally ready to do some uh, weathering. So in this uh, dish I have uh, some folk art traditional burnt umber, which is the brown and the barnwood gray. And I'm going to apply them with a wash, mostly doing the brown, but I'm going to do some, some areas with the gray. And I'm trying to keep it kind of light. This is how it looks after the weathering powders, and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, after the weathering powders, I sprayed it with some Tamiya Flat Clear to seal the weathering powders. And now that I've sprayed it with the Flat Clear, and I'm done with that step, I can install the windows. For the windows, I'm just going to use acetate from Hobby Lobby, and just cut it apart and glue it on the inside. One part of the structure that I need to think about is what they call the trackside shed, which is this piece, which kind of fits on the end like this. This is just a test fit, and then there's a roofing panel that goes there. And essentially this whole structure is covered with corrugated metal, and that's why they give you so much corrugated metal in the, in the kit. But that just seems excessive. You know, I mean, I like corrugated metal, but that just seems like too much. So I'm trying to think about whether I want to rebuild any of this, or none of this, or all of this and to think about how I can make that work. But you can see the gap. So there was apparently supposed to be rock that went underneath this, but it just didn't seem like there was enough to, uh, to do that. I was skeptical that you could even get track in a freight car underneath here, but it looks like it uh, fits pretty well. The one loading dock is in behind that, so it takes up some space. These walls were supposed to be covered with uh, the corrugated metal and on the front here. This is the roof that goes over the, the water wheel. And I decided I didn't like that, so I put on some scale 2x10s along the side, and I'm going to trim those down and use that as the siding. And here's that removable roof, roof piece that goes on like that. So this roof and this roof gets covered with the corrugated metal. 
but I didn't want to do the sides of the building. And it would have been tough to cut the corrugated metal to fit this particular angle, so that was another reason to do that. Well, I kind of had a last minute change of plans. I decided to ditch the water wheel. So I actually did assemble the water wheel, so this is it. And then I actually roofed the part that did go here. Uh, and the main reason I decided to ditch the water wheel is I think it'll fit better on the layout because I'm really building this for the layout. If I were going to have the water wheel, I'd have to raise up about like this and it would be an uneven bottom because the wheel kind of fits in about like there. So now I'll be able to have a, a more even uh, surface. So I just patched this with uh, some extra cardboard and I will put the corrugated metal over this roof area. Then I will do something else to fill in this spot. This is my idea for replacing the trackside shed. I just built this out of uh, some scale lumber. And the idea is it looks dilapidated, it's not supposed to look great. And the roof will be covered with uh, corrugated metal. But this was the original piece and it just didn't really look very interesting. And just covering the entire thing in corrugated metal seemed kind of weird. And also I don't believe that they gave you windows and a door for this piece. There might be a door, but I don't think there was any windows. This is my plan for the trackside shed with the uh, corrugated metal attached. So obviously there are some exposed metal edges from where I trimmed the metal sheets. And for this one I used mostly the, uh, the metal corrugated metal instead of the paper corrugated metal from Casey Workshop. Uh, so I'm going to go in and touch this up and then uh, maybe do a little more rusting to kind of bring the tones together. I decided that uh, removing the water wheel took away about 50% of the uh, charm of this building, so I added back this piece. Uh, fortunately, I was able to save it. And then here's the roof, which will go in like that, and then the water wheel will go under here. So I need to touch up uh, the various uh, corrugated metal edges. This corrugated metal I did with all the paper sheets, and you can see the white edge. Uh, where I trim these sheets. It's much easier to touch up the paper than it is the metal because I can use uh, a stain or uh, different types of paint and don't have to worry about it sticking to the metal. Uh, that's one of the advantages of using paper over the metal. I got the rest of the wall attached and this is my method of supporting the building uh, with the uh, uneven wall base. This wood in the layout would all get covered by groundwork so it wouldn't be visible then there'll be a loading dock here and then the wheel well goes here. Here's how the wheel well section fits in. In the box art they have the posts coming all the way out to the end of this uh, roof section which leaves this gap here so I'm not sure how they handled that. So it's another example of sort of the measurements not really working out. These are some of the piping details that they give you and it's also a bit of a puzzle to figure out exactly where they go. I don't know if you can see the angle. This toothpick is the axis for the water wheel and it slopes down when this end is down about uh, two or three millimeters too much. So it's pretty noticeable when the water wheel is there that it's not horizontal. What I'm going to do is raise up this little piece that holds the axis the other option, I guess, would have been to make these pillars shorter and then have this uh, raised up a little bit. It just makes me wonder how he managed to build it because the pieces just clearly aren't the correct dimensions. In case you're wondering about the motor for the water wheel, this is it. And you're supposed to wire it into uh, your household outlet, 120 volt household outlet. It says here 120 volt, 60 cycle, and then it apparently rotates at 6 RPMs. It's pretty heavy. The kit itself is already pretty heavy from all the metal walls, and so adding this in it would make it uh, even, even heavier. If you're wondering about the lights, these are the lights, and here's the computer board. These two spots are the these two spots are the power inputs 
So apparently you're supposed to use between a 10 and 12 volt direct current, uh, like a battery pack or something, and connect the leads in here. And then you have two of these cables. So these pins fit into these holes. And then the other end, these wires get connected to the light bulbs. And then I think you program it with these switches. Apparently all this does is turn the lights on and off on a schedule. Just like a timer in your house. Well, I wish I was a catfish swimming in a deep blue sea. I would have all you good looking women fishing, fishing after me. Shown up after me. Shown up after me. Oh, love. Oh, love. Shown up. I went to my baby's house and I sat down oh, on her stairs. Come on in now, buddy, even though my husband just not left. Shown up and just not left. Shown up and just not left. Oh, Lord. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, my mother. Just before I was born, I got a boy child coming, gonna be, he gonna be a rolling stone, showing sure up he's a rolling stone, showing sure up he's a rolling stone, oh well he's a, oh well he's a, oh well he's a, oh, well, he's a.